ما كان للمشركين أن يعمروا مساجد الله شاهدين على أنفسهم بالكفر أولئك حبطت أعمالهم وفي النار هم خالدون It is not for the mushriks to build up the mosques of Allah, while they are witnesses of their own infidelity. Those are the ones whose deeds have gone to waste, and in the fire they shall remain forever. In fact, the mosques of Allah are built up only by those who believe in Allah. And the last day and those who establish Salah and pay Zakah and who fear none but Allah. So, it is hoped that they are to be among those on the right path. So verse number 17 and 18 is talking about مَا كَانَ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ أَنْ يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ Allah. That it is not for the mushrikeens to build up the mosque of Allah. This is the important point that the Muslims should build the mosque and... Shahidina ala anfusim bil kufr, and they have already testified about their denial to God's unit, uh, oneness, uniqueness, since they made partner with Allah. Ulaika habatat amalum, their deeds have been uh, wiped out or gone to waste. Wafin narihum khalidun, or they will be in the fire forever. So even though they made the masajid, they claim that they are the maker of the masjid of haram. And they are the um, caretaker of the masjid, and they are basically not worthy of discussion in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, one thing to mention that uh, the uh, before Islam, the kuffar used to make a talbi, and this is a hadith from the Muslim. They used to say labbaik Allahumma labbaik, la sharika lak, labbaik la sharika lak. They don't just say Allahumma labbaik. They say la sharika lak. لبيك لا شريك لك إلا شريكم هو لك تملكه وما ملك. so it means they they acknowledge this. this hadith from لبيك لا شريك لك. here we are nobody's partner for you إلا شريك هو لك except the one who are the partner with you. تملكه وما ملك. and the kingdom is for and whoever is the king. Uh, so this is was their talbi. Labaik la sharika lak illa sharika huwa laka tamlika hu wa ma malak. And a Muslim talbi is Labaik Allahumma labaik la sharika laka labaik inna alhamna wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. You see, this is the true uh, decree which was supposed to be spoken and said during the ahram. So the other thing is that in uh, verse number 18 which is mentioned, here is that uh, in the 17, uh, they say that they be the masjid. So this is accordingly is revealed in honor to uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. At that time, he was not a believer. He was the uh, youngest of the uncle of Prophet sallallahu after Hamza. Hamza has passed. So now he was the second youngest. He was older. He was about 10 years old when Prophet was born. And he described a lot of things about Prophet uh, attributes. And when uh, in the Battle of Badr, he became the prisoner of war. He came as a prisoner of war. So when he was captured and uh, there was uh, in the Quran, Allah has uh, mentioned that uh, your blood relation and honor and all that. So uh, some Muslims, they were trying to embarrass him and, and try to bring him to the realize that how evil and wrong they have been doing and so and so forth. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
went further and he said you have no honor of the blood relation and the and the sala rahm sala rahm means in relation to the mother's womb that you are all from the same family and so on and so forth so abbas radiyallahu anhu the uncle of prophet at that time was not a muslim and he had not embraced islam and he says you talk about our negative things what we do or bad things but you don't talk about the good what we have done that we are the one who made the construct and maintain the haram e kaaba and then we do pre feed and uh, and drink pro provide water to the pilgrims when they come there and we pay for the prisoners to be released and buy them out and even though this is same uncle when prophet is migrating he came and talked to the people of medina when the bait e aqba ula when the first bait uh, when the medina people of the yathrib came to prophet and they wanted him to come to migrate and he was the uncle who was there with them now he is as becoming as a prisoner of war what what emotional situation could that be so accordingly this ayah was revealed when he said that we do good and what not so allah subhanahu wa taala is saying it's worthless If you don't believe in Allah and you do all these good deeds, they are going to go in waste. So first, first, the most thing is that to be monotheistic believer of La ilaha illallah. So at that time he come to realize, and when he returned back, there was another reported incident that when Prophet, uh, the people were supposed to buy their freedom, you know, ransom the money to for the freedom. So uh, Prophet Sallam asked Uncle, uh, "You have to be paying to get you bring your freedom." He said, "I have no money." The Prophet told him that, "What about that half a kilo or a kilo worth of gold which you told uh, Umm Fadl, his wife, uh, that it is being buried in the ground? And if I do not live and I die in the battle, then this is the one way you distribute among the wealth and take it out from their treasure." So he said, "How would you know?" He said, "My Allah informed me." Even though he knew that he spoke to his wife and there was no communication between his wife and the Prophet, peace be upon him. So at that time he come to realize that this is a real true prophet. And then when he recall all of his childhood experience with prophet when he was a baby, he saw that prophet would play with the moon and moon will be moving when he would be in the crib and he saw the angels coming. He saw the spiritual and beautiful thing of happening when he was a baby. Prophet Salsun was in the crib. So all these things when many things happen with him uh and so that they say that uh, they are the one who feed and provide food and water to the pilgrims so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it doesn't matter no matter how good deed you do if you don't believe in allah and don't believe in prophet your deeds will be wasted now you see this is the surah uh, at-tauba it is the very harsh revelations coming here and this is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the disbeliever so we have to be very mindful about it Listen to the verse number 19. أَجَعَلْتُمْ سِقَايَةَ الْحَاجِّ وَعِمَارَةَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ كَمَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ كَمَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَجَاهَدَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَا Have you taken the serving of water to the pilgrims and the maintenance of Al Masjidul Haram as equal to the acts of one who believes in Allah and in the last day and carries out jihad in the way of Allah? They are not equal in the sight of Allah. Allah does not lead the wrong doing people to the right path. الذين آمنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله بأموالهم وأنفسهم أعظم درجة عند الله وأولئك هم Those who believed and emigrated and carried out jihad in the way of Allah, with their wealth and lives, are greater in rank in the sight of Allah, and it is they who are the successful. يُبَشِّرُهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنْهُ وَرِضْوَانٍ وَجَنَّاتٍ وَجَنَّاتٍ لَهُمْ فِيهَا نَعِيمٌ Their 
Lord gives them the happy news of mercy from him, and of, his, pleasure, and gardens having an everlasting bliss for them. <laughs> Where they shall dwell forever. Surely, it is Allah, with whom lies a great reward. Uh so, we have heard the verse number 19 to verse number 22. In this, basically, it is being said that the service to pilgrims is not equal to the true belief in Allah and the last day and the jihad. And this is the what true Islam is. So, uh, we should know that Salah Adina Yubi, he fought all his life against the Crusaders, but he did not have time to go for Hajj because he never had enough money or the time. So he was doing jihad to free the Palestine. Uh, so some people think uh, the more important thing is to serve the masjid and making pledges and so on and so forth. Uh, the main thing is to help the Muslims with whatever you can to protect them and be a believer being a believer and then doing this will be having the reward which will be forever and ever so this is where the return is that even if you are in mecca and kaaba and serving the kaaba taking care of kaaba but if you don't believe in it it is not valuable in the eyes of allah allah subhanahu wa says you have to believe in and then do even a tiny little thing even a thought of good is a blessing and all the previous sin will be wiped off as they never existed. So this is something very important to understand. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of meaning in it, right? If you serve a masjid, you give donation to the masjid, you build a masjid, you feed people, you provide the food and water, and being a human, yes, but you have to have a faith in Allah. So humanity will be judged because there are many people who do these things as this particular verse of the Quran explains that a, a uncle of Prophet, he's first of all, his uncle. He himself is a blood relative to the Prophet. And he is making a claim that we do these things. We serve the uh, people in the pilgrimage. We provide them with food and sustenance. And our many Muslim brothers and sisters, they ask us that, oh, well, what about that such and such Muslim who doesn't do these things? Not doing is a personal issue, individual issue, but having a faith and doing it is that's what's going to be rewarded. So what is the matter with those people who are in worldly life and they do the good deeds? What's supposed to be? So according to what we understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a good life in the world. When they believe in the world and they did the good for the world, they got it here. Those who believe in Allah and hereafter, so they will do good and they will get blessing here and hereafter. There are people who say, Rabbana atina fi dunya wa ma lahu fil akhirati min khlaq. Wa minhum man yaquluna, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina daab al naar. Ulaika lahum naseebu min ma kasubu wa allahu sari al hasab. We can use this ayah to explain this a little bit. There are people who say, Oh Lord, give us everything in the world. Because they don't believe in hereafter. And they don't believe in the day of judgment. So, they will have nothing in the hereafter for them. But, among the people who say, Oh Lord, give us here and in the hereafter. Rabbanatina fi dunya hasana, give us all the beautiful things and the blessings of the world and the hereafter and protect us from the hellfire. For them, this is for what they have earned. Means now they are serving the mankind, taking care of the people, doing feeding and uh, feeding a hungry, providing water to the thirsty and giving uh, care for the poor and needy and, and orphans and uh, widowed and, and the Muslims who are in distress or anybody for that matter, even the creatures. So removing a thorn from the path as a believer with the thought that somebody might be hurt, which could be Muslim or non-Muslim, but you are a believer in doing out of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is blessing. So uh, this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have explained. And this uh, important thing that just being a caretaker of Kaaba Nobody could be more sacred place than the Kaaba in the Islamic world or Islamic belief. And it's saying that even if you are a disbeliever and doing service to the Kaaba and the pilgrimage for the Kaaba, you'll have nothing in the hereafter. Here, yes, you, people thank you. People will give you gift. People will show gratitude. So many of our Muslim brothers says, well, people do this, this, this. They don't do that. So you need to understand Muslim matter is different than a non-Muslim matter, first of all.
Number two is that if a Muslim who is more interested in serving people in the water and the Hajj compared to Saladin Ayyubi who was gone for jihad and did not even make Hajj because he never had enough money and he did not have time to go for Hajj. If he had left the place for the battlefield for the Hajj, there would have been a loss of Muslim army. So he never made a pilgrimage. So this is something to be understanding where the priority of a faithful lies. And we know what is going on in Gaza today, in Palestine. And it's been going on for almost 75 years. There's a suffering. There's a persecution. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them victory and protect them. And all the Muslim Ummah and humanity. We ask for love and peace for all humankind. So Allah, we pray that stop the oppressor and disbeliever and believer from doing the transgression and give the strength and courage and victory and protection to the oppressed one. This is our supplication. Let's listen to the verse number 23. <laughs> تَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ O you who believe, do not take your fathers and your brothers as your friends, if they prefer infidelity to faith. Those of you who have friendship with them are the wrongdoers. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَا وأبناؤكم وإخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين Say, if your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your spouses and your clan and the wealth you have earned and the trade you apprehend will receive in the homes you like are dearer to you than Allah and his messenger and jihad in his way, then, wait until Allah comes with his command. Allah does not lead the sinning people to the right path. So verse number uh, 20, uh, so 19 to, uh, sorry, 20, uh, 23 to 24, these are the two verses. Uh, this revelation came in in the reference when Prophet Sallallahu commanded and Allah's permission came in that Muslims should immigrate from Mecca to Medina. So they were Muslims who had a wife, children, parents, brothers, sisters, and they were the closest of the relative and their business and their, their, all the valuables were there. So uh, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this revelation because these people when they came to learn that our child is, who is Muslim now has to immigrate to Medina. So they asked them that do not leave us alone, what we'll do without you and so on and so forth. And their heart were becoming troubled, which is very difficult part. You know, when you travel, leaving your home and you never know it'll be ever coming back or not because now I'm a Muslim and you are non-Muslim. So this is for those who are departing as a faithful and the half family is Muslim, half is not Muslim, especially when you're a spouse and your children. Allah SWT says, Ya la amanu la ta Oh, you who believe, do not take your fathers. Abaukum wa ikhwanakum, your brother, awliya, in anistahabu al-kufra ala al-iman. If they love infidelity or not believing to the faith. And whoever among you who turn away the command of Allah over blood relative, everybody die. Nothing is going to left forever. So the beloved parents, beloved children, beloved brothers, brother, sisters and family, friends, all these going to leave. So then further revelation came in. Qul, say, oh messenger, oh beloved, in Kana, if you, if you are, your forefathers, your sons, 
وإخوانكم أبناء means children's wife and uh, children's sons and daughters وإخوانكم and your brothers وأزواجكم and your spouses وعشيرتكم and your closest relative brothers and sisters وأموالهم من اقترفتموها and the wealth which you have earned وتجارتن تخشونها كسادها that your trade and business wealth that you have a fear of loss ومساكن ترضاونها in your home which you love most you know nobody loves any place other than home أحب beloved to you إليكم upon you so أحب إليكم ترضاونها إليكم مساكن ترضاونها إليكم you see how many things أباؤكم أبناؤكم إخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال أموال من اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشونها كصادها ومساكن ترضاها ترضونها eight items Allah has enumerated there's nothing more beloved to person than these eight items and they are more beloved to you than the love of Allah and His Messenger and His struggle and jihad in the path of Allah than be sitting where you are till the command of Allah comes to you and Allah does not guide those who are disobedient. What is a fasiq? Fasiq is the one who understood, accept, believed, and practicing, and then he denied obedience to command of Allah and His Messenger. With this, we will stop here today, verse number 24. Inshallah, next Sunday we will begin. Wa akhru dawana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.